Hey guys, it's Lemming Rush. Light tanks are the hardest class in the game to play, apart from Arty, which is self-evidently way more difficult. But to today, because they're the second hardest class in the game to play, I figured I'd show you some live gameplay in them and show you how I go about playing my light tanks and kind of give you some basic tactics that you can apply in your games. So enjoy. Okay. <laughs> All right, so for this one, we're on Mannerheim line. Now, this is one of the most uh, cancerous light tank maps in the game. There's really only one scouting play that a lot of people will make, and that's actually in these bushes right here. And so if you're trying to scout on this map, those bushes are very successful. Me not being the type of person to scout, I really don't like it. I find that type of play style really boring. So what I tr like passive scouting, I find that hella boring. So what I try to do instead is I try to figure out who's going to the south. In my opinion, whoever wins the south is often the most successful team anyways. So, you know, by going to a position like this, you spot camping TDs. Generally speaking, the people at F4 don't really impact the battle. So it's like, sure, you can spot them, but you're not really playing for the win by scouting those people. So... I try to impact the side that I feel is the most important, that's the south or the north. I hate going to the north, so I'm going to go to the south, and I'm going to try to make that work. Now, one of the things that you can expect if you go to the south on this map is you can really expect their heavies and TDs to go there, and sometimes you'll find mediums. Now, I go to this low road, and the problem with the low road is there's very little exit. So in an all tier 10 game like this, if you're trying to make this play, you'd want to get shots and then leave, especially if you have no support like we do in this case. So I come here, I spot a 57. Now that 57 might light me. I do have high camo, so I guess not. And I end up putting a shot into him. That tracks him. I might get hit because my exit was shitty actually. And from here, I'm actually okay staying because the 260 is probably not going to YOLO across and I might be able to get one more shot onto this 57 before leaving. If not, it's not the end of the world, but if I can track him or something and then get him clicked, that's like a perfect beginning to the game. So this guy's getting shot. He's fired a couple shots. I just got a thousand assists. That is, is, that is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm going to look for one more shot into him, put one into the side of his turret. Perfect. And that removes a full HP T57 from the game. And for a beginning play, that's like 10 out of 10. So you can see the enemy I7 has dropped down. Now, because our flash was so aggressive, the I7's hella distracted. I'm going for the I7's track to try to get some assist there. We're up to 2k action. I'm going to just continue to try to track this guy to help out my flash and continue to get the assist damage because I want the assist so I can mark this tank. There you go, we're up to 3k assist. So that's really solid. Now, the next play is probably going to, like, generally speaking, once these two opening plays have happened, you're going to be doing a lot of damage related play. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try not to drown and I'm going to sneak up like so. So, one thing that I'm not comfortable with is driving like this. I don't know if that's possible anymore, but by getting to here, I can kind of look for shots on people like the 260. But more importantly, I'm kind of trying to spot anyone who's over here. So, you know, they've got four TDs in this case. I'm just trying to see if they exist or where they're sitting. One of them spotted right here. So, you know, I'm just trying to find their TDs. Now, in this case, with my 460 meters to range, you'd think I would spot them unless they're in a bush. And because I have the camo, I'm okay. Like, I'm not spotting anything. I'm going to do something else because the game seems to be progressing really quickly. And I just want to go, you know, get damage before the end of the game. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm popping over like so. Now, this might be actually really retarded. What I'm able to do is I'm able to see if anyone's here. And because my view range is so high, I can be reasonably confident that there's no one. But uh, from here, I can engage people like the bat shot. Good and get spawning damage on him and we also managed to find a grill so the grill's not looking a leopard hits me he damages our gun what do i go from here why don't i just push this 13105 no there's two people supporting that guy it's not a smart play i can look for shots on the leopard and the beautiful thing from this position is even though i'm in the middle of the map and kind of in the open no one's really spotting me and i wouldn't expect these guys to come spot me so you know it's pretty safe now from here, I would feel more confident about engaging like the 430 than the T100 light tank. If I got spotted, you could imagine like the grill might put a shot onto me and all that. So I have to be really careful here. With the 277 YOLOing the T100, I'm going to join. And we're going to try to commit as quickly as possible to get safe from the grill. So I'm going to push forwards. And this is like one of those plays that I'm not used to making. Fuck, it sucks that the leopard blocked me, man. <laughs> I'm up to 4k spotting, but zero damage. So what I'm going to do is we're going to try to flank to try to get more damage. Oh, fuck. Okay, at least I got the track. This guy's also going to put one into me, and so that's a lot of my HP gone right off the bat. This guy's going to be reloading, so I'm looking for a shot. I get one into him. Perfect. And from here, my best play is to kind of to help out with the 268, in my opinion. So the 430, you shot. Go for the track and the damage. Perfect. And then we're going to get safe from the 430U. That increases my assist, right? And basically, I just have to play off of this 430. If he shoots or looks away, that's when I engage him, right? So put a shot into his rear because he looked away. That's 1700 damage. We're up to 5k assist, which is really solid. Um, let's see if he falls back. If he falls back, I'll get shots. Now, one of the main things to worry about in this type of situation is Artie. So what I want to do is I kind of want to change my position slightly. That's going to give me rear shots on the 430, and it also conceivably would make it harder for Artie to hit me. Now, in this case, they've got 
two unspotted tanks and I'm kind of pushing into the open here. So this is actually a bit of a retarded play. I need to wait for my team. If you look at where my team is right now, like this is a mistake everyone makes, especially in their lights because they're so quick. It's like, it's very easy to get ahead of your team. So in this case, all of our team is back here. For me to push around E2, for example, it's just going to get me hit by like the Leopard 1 who's here or the SCRV who's here and the Fosh B who's ready for that. All that shit, like it's not smart to be hella aggressive. Now they just lost an enemy Fosh B, <laughs> which is very impressive. He died over here, so conceivably you could imagine multiple tanks were over there. Um, like maybe he got pushed. I don't know how he died, but I'm theorizing that maybe he got pushed. And because now my teammates are kind of in position and this 277 is going very wide, I feel reasonably comfortable pushing up. Now, this could end in my death, especially because I'm a one-shot. You'd kind of expect enemies to YOLO here. He hasn't noticed me, so I'm not going to shoot him. You see, he zoomed in. Yeah, so we're just going to fall back and get the spotting damage. That was really lucky there. The 65 wasn't zoomed out and he didn't see me. So what I'm going to do is the Leopard's dead. They've got an STRV. So you can imagine, like, if you're an STRV, you'd probably be back here in the bushes or whatever. And so this guy still hasn't noticed me and I really want damage. I'm going to take the risk and I might get hit by the STRV. We spot the STRV, I hope. I'm going to try to get one more shot into this Progetto. Who missed me, thank god. <laughs> And I want to try to get one more shot if I can, as much damage as possible. We end up breaking 5k damage assist, 2,300 uh, actual damage. And we're going to just try to get shots in the GWE. So, Tree just fell right here. So, what I need to do is I need to increase my height to try to get more shots into him. Put one into him because I assumed he would die really quickly. Maybe I could have aimed an extra second there. But I took the shot. It didn't pay off. But, you know, still a fantastic game. All right. So, one thing I've noticed that's been happening as I've been making this video is, like, one thing that happens when I play light tanks, especially uh, live, is I play way differently than I do not way differently like last game that I showed you was very authentic but over the past couple of recordings I've kind of been playing in such a way that is bad but commenters would approve you know so what I'm going to try to do for this one is I'm going to focus on playing like authentic to my style um because I've been throwing games because I've been playing stereotypically how light tanks should be playing. So for this one, run the map highway. Now, generally speak, like honestly, what I would love to do on a map like highway is I love to go city and I love to go for early shots. Now, typically speaking, like what this will let you do if you go city in a light is it lets you stay already safe. And that's my main reason for going. Then my other main reason for going is it gets me shots on any fast tanks that go into the city. Now, you know, an alternative is you do figure out who's going to the city, but personally, I don't care about that because what happens is I can predict who will go city. So for example, on a map like Highway, you'd expect heavy tanks. So they're IS-4, 57 heavy, type 5. They're all going to go city and you may expect one TD and you might expect one medium to go city as well. And so like, that's kind of what you'd expect by making this type, like it will give you that information, but gen normally I don't really need that type of thing. So they've got an EBR who like hella scouted aggressively um, right here. Now what's that's going to make happen is it's going to make these guys sort of be way more passive because they're going to be distracted by the light. So you'd expect those guys to actually take longer to get into the city because the light's distracting them. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here. We're just looking down the zero line, looking for shots. One thing you can sometimes do is you can look at broken objects. Sometimes people will break stuff as they come down this line. Um, but my view range is so high. You know, we spotted a, an IS-4 at 424 meters. So the EBR is spotting our Artie. He might actually kill one. I'm not going to engage that IS-4. It's just not worth it. Um, even shooting at him will break my camo. That's going to show them where I am. It's not worth my time to like bounce off an IS-4's lower plate. Maybe I'll get Artie because Artie's looking in, you know, uh, it's not worth it in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is we're going to fall back and assess the situation because what happens is the mistake that I'll make is I'll sometimes stick around in the city for too long, especially in like an all tier 10 game. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the map. I see that there's a couple tanks pushing in here and they've got three media, three lights in the mid. So because they've got so much light tank power in the mid, what you could like expect as a light tank driver is, you know, if, imagine if you were in a group of three lights and there was nothing, uh, preventing you from pushing, you would do that. That's a very common mistake in lights. They tend to be very aggressive. And so you'd expect these guys to start driving up the middle of the map. And, you know, I want to go deal with that, maybe put side shots into people and so like so forth. So I can do that. Now it's totally okay. Like one thing I mentioned, uh, well, Jesus Christ, we just lost a, oh boy, that's not good at all. We lost, they're going to win the city. Okay. So by coming to the field, I'm actually kind of giving up the city. Now, in my opinion, that's okay. What I want to do is because I'm already here, I want to put like two shots in, help out, try to make sure we win the field and then go deal with the city. Because in my opinion, the city is very important on this map, especially when there's three arty, that's going to keep you very arty safe. Now this Udez might push forwards. I don't really play this angle very frequently. Um, 
Oof, Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> so this is the type of thing I don't like showing in my videos because what's happened is I've driven to one side of the map and I've done absolutely nothing. And I'm going to have to leave because what's happened here is um, that you does. He's going to die, probably. We've got three already. Like, I'd expect him to die. And realistically, if he pushes down the one line, we're going to lose. The problem is, in this case, the city is a much bigger deal. So what I have to do is I literally have to drive back to the city to try to help out with that. Because otherwise, I feel like if I don't impact the city fight, we're going to lose the game. You can see we've got three greens. They've got about five reds. And I feel like by joining there, I might be able to turn the tables towards our favor. Now, interestingly enough, you'll see that EBR who's being hella aggressive, he's made a beautiful play for myself, because what it means is because he's scouted out all these TDs, I can play far left, like so, and I can actually use this ridge to get hull down against the enemies, where, you know, normally you wouldn't be able to do that because TDs might be here. In this case, we know they're not. So the EBR scouting was very useful, and you can see I've actually arrived way too late, so I ended up being totally fucking useless right here. Okay, so what's gonna happen here? Okay, so this type of thing happens, right? Like, it's very normal to make mistakes and then having to deal with them. Now, what's happened here is this FV is coming back to base. Now, for me, I see an arty opening. I can go after the arty here. What I want to do is I want to make sure I'm unspotted. So this FV is coming after me. I hope he doesn't nail me. He might. I'm probably unspotted by now, I hope. So what I'm going to do is I'm rushing straight towards the arty. Interestingly enough, the EBR hasn't gotten anything. Um, and one mistake people make when they go after arty is they generally stay around for too long. Light tanks against arty are effective until they're noticed because what happens is arty don't even have to hit you for them to do like 500 damage to you. So what I'm going to do is we're going to spot the arty and try to put shots into one or two of them. There we go. And because this thing's so good on the move, like, I'm okay with this. But you can see, immediately, I find them, and they start looking towards me. So the mistake everyone makes is they'll try to take on three arty, and they'll die from that type of play. It's not worth it. Like, I, I'm still full HP. I don't want to lose all my HP just yet. Finding them and maybe getting them killed by the enemy arty is, like, a play I'm okay with. And you can imagine if I stuck around for even longer, I'd be dying to that 57 heavy. So... IS-4 is coming in from this angle, 57 from this. Their whole team is going to be coming back from the city. Luckily, we've managed to win the field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push shot towards the IS-4. That keeps me lit. My main objective here is to try to get back towards my team. You'll notice we've got a lot of people in our base. And so for me to kind of stick around in the field when they've all come back to base is really shitty. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to fall back. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is very frustrating. Um... But, you know, I'm full HP, this is the end of the game, we have a lot of potential, especially with that EBR still alive, so, and our two TDs, so, you know, that's actually not too bad. One thing to consider is, oh, is this the AFK EBR? I don't know, one of them was AFK. One thing, when I started getting good at World of Tanks, like, I realized, because what would happen is I'd play a game, and then my mom would call me to do chores, and I'd do them quickly, and I'd be AFK, right, and I'd still be alive. A lot of the times, like, it's okay to be useless, because what can happen is if you just survive for the beginning of the game, you find yourself in endgame situations, and that's actually how I realized, like, it's better not to die than to do anything, because just try it. Like, <laughs> maybe I'm not advocating going AFK, but maybe go to a fight, guard your HP as, as if you're a one-shot, and focus on living, and you'll be surprised at how many endgame situations you end up being in. So... Yeah, right here what I've done is I've come back to the K-line. Now what I'd expect is because they haven't pushed through, we can just double check, right? Nothing's pushing through right here. The SRV may not have spotted that. They're probably going kind of back to base to deal with me. Now here they've got the 268. I'm spotting him, which is fantastic. Hopefully our Artie will end up finishing him off, and I can get the assist for that. Now what I'd kind of expect is I would expect this 268 to be... Is he alone or not? Because if he's alone, I can go kill him, right? If he's not alone, I'd find myself... I would expect the Type 5 to be backing him up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gamble. If I can kill him, that would be great. I'm going to be careful about it, though. I'm going to poke up here, see if anything gets spotted. Nothing gets spotted, so we're just going to drive forwards. I go for the track on the 268. That allows me to get behind him. And here, actually, the big thing is staying already safe. So what I'm going to do... So we're going to try to retrack. Good, get the retrack. And I'm hugging this building. The main thing is staying already safe, right? This guy's now a one-shot. And what I'm going to do, you can see the Type 5 went back to base. Um, we're going to look for a side shot on that Type 5 really quickly here. There we go. It's not going to pen, though, is it? Fuck. Okay. So we're safe, right? Now, what, what would probably happen is thanks like the 57 Heavy, the 183, are probably coming back to the city just because they haven't really been engaging anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fall back and kind of predict that they're doing that. And we can go after the IS-4 because the IS-4 is actually really alone right now. <laughs> And if I can keep him lit and kind of put shots into his side while the already pummels him, we can actually be very successful. The great thing about the enemy team right now is they're pushing into us one by one. So 
like I said, right now I would expect the 183 to be coming back into the city, maybe the 57 Heavy as well. They've got that Type 5 who's sniping from their base, and from here, I'm just going to hope that the IS-4 is alone. One thing that you might want to be aware of is like that T-57 Heavy, he was back in base, he could have pushed up the one line. So me going to engage this IS-4, I have to make sure that there's no 57 Heavy as well. And there you go, there's the 57 Heavy. So double checking that was really good. Um, how do I engage these people? The problem is here I am in like a light tank, and a lot of these tanks I can't pen reliably. So what I'm going to try to do is they've got three already still. Let's see. 57. His best play is actually kind of to rush me. So what I'm going to do is he's got the gun depression to fight me here. I'm going to act as bait. I want him driving into my SCRV. I want him driving into my grill, and I want him lit for our already. Now their already is going to have a hell of a time hitting me because I'm so far away from them that I can pretty reasonably avoid them. The biggest thing here is getting pushed and rushed by that 57 heavy who obviously can clip me out. He's got 1600 clip potential. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of falling back, and interestingly enough, you can see there's the FV. He went back into the city. So we know where all of their heavies are, which is fantastic from my perspective. What you'd do in a light tank in a situation is you'd continue to go after the tanks that are alone, right? So what I can do is this FE's alone. We know that. He's a TD. I can definitely engage him. So I'm going to push into the TD, and that will free up the like the zero line side of the map and kind of let me get behind the IS-4 and 57 heavy. So that's kind of like the rough idea as it is. Hopefully I don't get penned by the 183. I've done that on video before, so... <sighs> We'll see. I'm going to YOLO him instead of relying on my TDs to hit him because my TDs are going to be busy with the IS-4 and shit. So we'll see if that works. Now this guy's in the open. Perfect. He's a two-shot. And so from here, actually, I could go for Artie conceivably, and I don't think that'd be too bad of a play. But like I said, I'd have to, you know, when dealing with Artie, you have to be very careful because you can definitely die to Artie. So realistically, I might get hit here after fighting those guys. There you go. 261 hits me. I repaired that just because I don't want to get hit again by an Artie and I want to move. Um... These are never going to pen, eh? <sighs> now I have to take the gamble fighting Artie. So we know where the 261 is. We don't know where the T92 is. The T92 is a one-shot. Um, realistically speaking, I think killing the Artie will allow my grill and the STRV to continue to be successful in this game. So just distracting the Artie and kind of like making that play is the right one in my opinion. So I put a shot into the 261. The 261 should drive forwards to get safe from me, and that's exactly what he's doing. That's the right play from him. I fucking bounce the 261. So here, because the 261's distracted and I'm not spotted, I'm going to go after other people because this guy's clearly not shooting at my teammates, but he's ready for me. So I can go after the T92 and GWE and fight people who aren't prepared for me at all. And so I kind of expect them to be in this area. There you go. There's the T92. So pull one into him, get the kill. There's the GW. So the GW hasn't noticed me, but you can imagine he'll probably have six cents. Um, I could wait till I'm behind him where I could just put a shot into him. I put a shot into him. He's going to try to get one more off, and you can see immediately now he's not looking at the enemy teammates. And what you'd expect... Fuck. <laughs> I just bounced a lot of arty. Jesus Christ. So we're going to go for shots in this GWE. Cool. And then the next thing is trying to find that object 261. Realistically, the 261 is driving to the A-line because I did give him that opportunity. So we have to make sure we kill the 261. Honestly, at this point, the game is over. I'm just chasing down my fifth kill. Um... And really, like, it wasn't a hyper successful game. Like, this isn't the type of epic game that most people will put on YouTube, but I think I played... We just lost an SCB1. We could lose this if the 261 penned me. But I feel like I played really reasonably well. Um, and, you know, I did end up getting five kills. But it's very interesting. Like, I want to show how useless you can be at the beginning of the game and still have a major impact, despite the fact that I was zero damage in, like five minutes into the game so i hope that was informative like realistically that's how a lot of like gameplay looks um even though you know i wasn't stereotypically scouting i wasn't really flanking people that's kind of what um a light tank game looks like even if it's not that great at the beginning of the game so yeah i hope this video was helpful if you want to see more be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button and i hope to see you around later guys bye, -bye.